first day out for the season. There's not a lot of baiter out there yet because it has been a late start here. So we've kind of, yeah, just selected a representative slope, same aspect, same elevation, same kind of steepness. And we're just going to take a very quick look and see what we can see. So this is going to serve a couple of purposes doing this snow pit, like in our first day out for the season is it's going to force us to get our gear out again as well. So it's going to force us to get our shovel out, force us to get our probe out and just start getting tactile and start using that again, right? The other thing you'll notice here before we dig this snow pit is I've got everything organized and out of the way. So we have skis upright, poles upright, bag over there. We don't have a whole bunch of stuff spread out. It's very easy to get things buried. Uh, so if you can start getting back into those good processes from the past seasons, it's a really good habit to get into. So the tools we need for the, for the pit are basically we're going to need our shovel. We're going to need our probe. We're also going to need a saw. Um, you can do this without a saw, but it does make life a little bit easier. So that one's buried a little deeper because I don't need it in an emergency potentially. But... Uh, just pull that guy out and so that's all the tools of the trade i'm not going to leave my bag open i'm going to close it all up make sure there doesn't get snow in it and everything and and then we're all organized and we're ready to kind of do this in a in a really effective and efficient manner so again just to remind people i'm not a ski guide i've just been doing this for a while and uh i teach ast courses and that kind of thing so this is sort of the bread and butter but we're going to take a very recreational lens on this this is we're not going to get technical with snow analysis. We're not going to really use this to make any decisions. This is just a simple process to dig a pit, what we're kind of looking at and how to do a very simple compression test. And that's it. So we won't go any deeper than that. Um, that's something for the guides and, and such to, to dig into more deeply. So first up, what we're going to do is we're going to use our probe to try and find a consistent depth somewhere. Firstly, we don't want it disturbed above. We want it fresh snow we don't want to have walked above it we want to be doing all of our wa our work below so here in this first probe strike it's about a meter it's about a little bit deeper meter 10 meter so what we're looking for here is if there's any like really shallow rocks or trees or anything that are going to really impact uh the the pit that we're digging but here it's all relatively consistent so i'm just going to put my probe in here and that's going to act as my my top wall there and then i'm very quickly here just going to start digging and excavating snow downhill if you have one of those hoe shovels this is actually a good use for it to start with is to get rid of all this soft snow i don't just have to do it the old-fashioned way if you don't move the snow from down below you end up just digging yourself into a big hole and it actually becomes quite a lot harder to get, say, to the ground, which is what we're kind of aiming to do here. So for the for professionals who are forecasting or guides who are using this and they're accumulating data over the season, this is a very scientific and precise process. For me personally, when I'm out touring and just using this as not as a decision making tool necessarily, but as a partner to the bulletin just to see if it matches where I am. I'm not quite as precise with it. So I'm not gonna make sure, we want this vertical, not overhanging. Same with the side walls, but I'm not worried too much about it being totally perfect. We're also start, we're already starting to get some beta here. That top snow is all very soft. As we get further down, we're starting to get consolidated slabs. And then at the bottom, as we would expect, We've got this sugary, facety kind of stuff. So we're already painting a picture just as we dig. I'm just excavating this a bit wider so we have plenty of room to separate a column and do a simple column test here. Just carve this off a little bit. Got to be a little bit OCD about this, but not too much. And that's good enough for me. Carve off the side here a bit so we can get a bit of a looky loo and we're all good. So first things first, we can kind of look at this side wall and see if there's any layers of note. In the sunny part here, to the naked eye, I can't see a lot. Unfortunately, just below this shadow line, I very much can see a layer here. There's a very dramatic transition there from this presumably storm snow into some older kind of facety kind of snow down here. So we just kind of get a bit of a visual 
very quickly, again, not getting too in the weeds with this, is you can measure the stiffness of snow. Uh, people who are forecasters and such, they use fists. So if you push and your fist goes into it, it's considered not very dense snow. You can then go like four fingers is a little bit stiffer, but it still pushes in. Then we drop to one finger. So that's an even stiffer kind of a slab. Okay, and then we can use a pen and a knife, right? So they're all just tools to determine the stiffness of the snow. Again, not going into any details, but something you can play around with. So I do encourage you, if you haven't taken an AST course, take an AST course, because I'll talk about this in more detail, but just play around with it. The next step of this is kind of building the compression test, like building the column. A very technical saw cover there. <laughs> we just want this to be approximately 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters by 30. And we want it relatively square. It's about the size of a shovel blade. If you have a smaller shovel, make a smaller square. Question for you. Yeah. Are saw blades measured at 30 centimeters for the most part? More or less. Like this one here has, they all have markers on them. Oh, nice. So 30 centimeters goes to here. I think 35 is all the way to the butt on this one. Some of them are a bit shorter, some are a bit longer, but they all have measurements on them. We want to make sure that we cut relatively vertically. Okay, all the way down. Then, just to make sure it's consistent on the other side, I'll kind of mark it, measure it out, mark it. So I've got, a, I've got something to aim for. So I can cut, hit that 30. Oh, it's a little bit, bit wide on that, but that'll do. So now we've got this column that's semi-separated. Can't do much with that because it's still attached to the snowpack up here. So now what I do here is I'm just going to create a wedge, just out and then kind of cut back in. And that's going to start to isolate this column. And again, we're also getting a little bit of information here. So we want to clear all that out. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Do that in stages. I'm just going to separate some more space here so I can fit this saw in behind. Just being careful not to damage the column itself because even though we're not looking at something that's scientific we're just we want something that gives us good information so we've more or less separated that then we're going to be looking in here because we want this whole thing to be separated so we want to see the saw all the way through all the way down and we can you can slice it back up we'll just pull it out the other side so we now know because this column is completely separate from the sides and the top. So we now have something that's isolated. Just going to put this in the side here so it doesn't get buried and we don't lose it. The simple steps here are is we kind of flatten the top off and get rid of some of that soft storm snow. We're going to do 10 from the wrist, which is easy. 10 from the elbow, which is moderate. And 10 from the shoulder, which is hard. Right, so it could be... E3 would be easy on the third tap. M15 would be moderate on the 15th tap, right? So what we're looking for here is if the column drops or pops. So if it drops down and like, which is like a settlement, or we get something that actually slides off. So we'll just keep an eye out for that. So one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you've got some non-planar things happening here. That's just the storm snow where it's formed a small slab. No big deal there. And then we're just going to go from the elbow. So this is a little bit harder. So one, two, three, four. So we saw on that one, the whole column dropped. So that was actually this slab that's formed kind of like settling on the facets on the bottom. So that is definitely something that we would be looking at and it's something to keep in the back of our mind right so we got four so we saw that drop that's important to note so five six another one it's not planar so it's not square it's kind of breaking off to be considered but it's not like exactly what we're looking for i think i was at 17 18 19 20. and now we give her one and again it, it, it slid on that facet layer Oh, there we go. That's good. I'm glad we got that. So then that 
we had that slab came off on probably a surface, buried surface or a rain crust or something like that, which we're not going into, but that's what we're looking for. That's that planar fracture. When you see the video footage of big slab avalanches happening and you see it looks like a spider wear, like it looks like a window pane breaking, that's what's happening. So that's something definitely to consider. Uh, we're skiing really mellow terrain today, so we're not, we're not gonna do too much with this, but it certainly does uh, match some of the stuff we're seeing in the forecast today. So that's it. That's a very simple, quick, non-scientific uh, compression test and snow pit uh, from a not ski guide. So one last thing in the name of backcountry etiquette is fill in your damn snow pits, okay? Uh, there's, I was actually talking to a buddy yesterday about a story from the coast where off the back of Seymour, people had dug a snow pit, didn't fill it in, it set up like ice overnight and someone broke their leg skiing into it in bad visibility. So here in the Rockies, we don't tend to get that dramatic freezing, but what we want to do, if someone comes rolling over this with a ton of speed or they're in the middle of like a trick or something like that, we don't want them to come super fast into just like a big hole that could potentially injure them. So just do your best to kind of fill it in and make it a bit of a softer transition if someone does run into it. Mm -hmm.